Today's story is a French folktale called Felicia and the Pot of Pinks. Only on Stories That Pop, coming right up. I'd like to tell you something that you may not already know. See, not every story has characters in it who are always kind and gentle. This story begins with such a character. It begins with a king. Now, this king had a queen who had already given him six daughters. Oh, but he didn't want any more daughters. Nope. This king wanted a son. Someone he could pass the kingdom on to after he had died. The queen became pregnant again. The king was bound and determined to make sure that this time, the seventh child, was going to be a boy. And so he took the queen and locked her up in a tower. He told her, if you do not give me a boy, then off with your head. She was afraid, afraid for her life, of course. Who wouldn't be? While she was locked up in the tower, she received a very special message. A message from a dear friend of hers who was a fairy queen off in a faraway land. This is what the message said. I have heard of your plight. Listen, I have just given birth to my own small son. I have an idea. What if, if you give birth to another girl, what if we swap the children, before your husband the king finds out. He will raise my son as his own, and my son will inherit the kingdom. I will raise your daughter as my own, and you shall live. The queen thought that was a great idea. But before she ever heard from the fairy queen again, she gave birth. And she gave birth to a beautiful little girl. She knew that meant she was going to die. So instead of waiting to hear another word from her friend, she fashioned a rope and climbed out of the tower and escaped as far as she could. On her journey, she went from her kingdom to the next kingdom to another kingdom where she came across the laborer's wife. A laborer's wife was, was very poor, as was her husband, the laborer, and she was also a gossip. She loved collecting stories about fancy towns and fancy people. Well, this was the fanciest person she had ever seen. So, of course, she welcomed in the queen, though the queen's clothes were ratted and tattered, and she looked tired and exhausted and sick. She took care of the queen and her baby, whose name was Felicia. She took care of them as best as she could, but unfortunately, the queen still died. The laborer's wife and her husband, the laborer, had decided that they would go ahead and raise Felicia up as their own daughter, along with their natural-born son, Bruno. Well, the wife, she loved talking. She loved that gossip. And anybody that would listen, she would tell the story about the queen and how she's actually raising a princess, which drew the attention of a very noble lady one day when she came over to the house while the laborer was out in the forest cutting woods. The wife opened the door, saw this beautiful lady, welcomed her in, and immediately began telling her all about how Felicia was actually a princess and how the queen had died. This noble lady knew, knew that if this woman, this laborer's wife, kept telling the story, that that girl, Felicia, was going to be in grave danger. That surely the king would have sent an army to come after them. So she took out her wand. It was the only thing she could think to do. She took out her wand and pointed it at the laborer's wife and burp, burp, turned that woman into a hen. She left then. She shut the door, leaving Bruno and poor little Felicia alone in this house with this hen. When the laborer came home, he saw the hen, he saw the girls, and he, he assumed something terrible had happened to his wife. She had never been gone for so long. He raised them up as his own children. Not long after, the same noble lady returned. She came over to the door, and the laborer opened the door, and she came inside and said, I've heard about how you're raising these children all on your own. So I have a gift for you to give to the girl someday. First is this small silver ring. Second is this pot of pink flowers. Please, someday, make sure that she has them. They are for her and her alone. 
and then she left. Many years later, the laborer had grown old, and he had grown tired, and he knew that he was coming to the end of his own life. So he called his children into his bedroom. He said, Bruno, Felicia, I don't have much to give to you, but I am dying. Here's what will be yours. Felicia, once this noble lady came to me and gave me this silver ring and this pot of pinks, she told me that they're to be yours someday, so this is what I leave to you. Bruno, everything else is yours. Everything else is yours. And then he died. And they collected their belongings. Now, Felicia thought, she thought that that was going to be just okay. She thought that her brother loved her, but in truth, he had always heard the stories about how she was a princess. And she didn't know the stories at all. Well, he was very jealous, had grown quite bitter towards Felicia. So one night when she went to sit on one of Bruno's stools, he went up to her and kicked the stool out from underneath her said, not in my house. In my house, you'll use what is yours and only yours, and I'll use what is mine and sometimes what's yours if I want to because it's my house. She was distraught. She was heartbroken. She thought that her brother loved her. The next day, he had whipped up some eggs that had once belonged to that hen. Mm, they tasted good, and the aroma filled up the house. But when he was done eating, he took the shells and he threw them at Felicia and said, If you're hungry, do something with these shells. Otherwise, go out into the swamp and catch some frogs. Felicia began to cry, began to weep. The tears flowed. She ran off into her room. And as soon as she opened the door, oh, the smell of the flowers hit her. And she was reminded of happiness and joy. She went over to the pot of pinks and she looked at them and they were so dry. She knew she needed to water them. She picked up a pitcher, just a normal, regular ceramic pitcher, and she took it off quite a distance away towards a fountain. She began to dip the pitcher down into the water, and as she did so, she could hear music coming from off in the distance. It almost sounded as though the, the wind, as it went through the reeds, was playing its own sort of melody. She looked up, and there was a noble lady, a beautiful woman with several attendants with her coming towards her. Oh, Felicia hid as best as she could. The noble lady reached the fountain, and they laid out a blanket of gold and constructed a nice canopy to protect them from the sun. The lady saw Felicia and said, you there, come here, come here. What is it that you're doing out here all alone, all by yourself? Aren't you afraid of robbers? She said, all I have in this wide world is a silver ring and a pot of pink flowers. I have nothing else, so why should I be afraid of robbers? The noble lady asked, but what of your heart? What if somebody were to steal your heart? Well, if somebody were to steal my heart, then surely I would not live. But though I'm poor, I would be very sad to not be alive any longer. The noble lady thought about that and thought, that's a very interesting and wise reply. She said, have you not eaten anything? No, I'm so hungry. No, I've not eaten a thing. The noble lady prepared then a plate of delicious food and gave it to Felicia, who ate her fill until her stomach was completely satisfied. She said, she said, young lady, go now, go now, retrieve your pitcher and, and water your pot of pinks. Felicia reached down, picked up the pitcher, but it was no longer a ceramic pitcher. No, it was made entirely of gold and was encrusted with diamonds all the way around it. Felicia didn't know what to think. The nail lady said, go, take that, take that with you. Felicia said, well, oh, okay, but, but will you wait here, please? I will go and retrieve my, my pink flowers and bring them to you. I can't think of anybody better to share half of my treasure with in all this wide world. The noble lady said, I will wait. I will wait and go and know that the queen of the woods, the fairy queen, is your friend. Felicia went. She made it to her room. She opened up the door. And where 
the pot of pink should have been. Instead, she saw a big, rotten cabbage. Furious, knowing that her brother Bruno had done something with her flowers, she picked up her ring. She didn't have the flowers to give to the fairy queen, but she was going to give her the ring. She made it back to the fountain, offered the ring to the fairy queen, and said, My brother has taken my flowers. Will you please have this ring instead of them? Well, the fairy queen, knowing that she was then taking the rest of Felicia's possessions, said, Very well, but please know that I am always here should you need me. Felicia left then without anything in the whole wide world. She went into her room. She saw that cabbage. She picked up the cabbage and threw it out the window, at which point she heard the most strange sound, a wondrous sound, something she never would have expected to hear from a cabbage. No, she threw that cabbage out the window and then heard this. Well, you just about killed me throwing me out like that. A talking cabbage? Felicia went around, picked it up, and the cabbage kept talking to her. I could tell you what happened to your flowers if you would just plant me back in the ground. She didn't know what to think. She had never seen a talking cabbage before. But she said, very well, I will plant you if you'll tell me where the flowers are. Your brother Bruno has taken them and hidden them beneath his straw mattress. And he put me in their place. But I didn't ask to be picked up. She understood. She took the cabbage and planted him back where he should have been. She was going to go on to Bruno's room to get the, the flowers from beneath the straw mattress when she came across the hen that their father had left Bruno. She picked up the hen and she was angry and she said, Oh, you're going to pay for everything my brother has done to me. But before she could do anything to the hen, the hen started to talk too. The hen said, No, 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 no. Don't hurt me. Don't hurt me. Please, please. Let me tell you, I've never been able to talk before, but now I can once again. See, I am the laborer's wife. I was your nursemaid. I raised you up, but unfortunately, I was such a gossip. I told the wrong lady all about your real mother, the queen. A queen, Felicia, you're a princess. And I told her about how the queen had brought you here and what would have happened. That noble lady turned me into a hen. Years, days later, she came by and she gave, she gave my husband, your adopted father, the silver ring and that pot of pinks and told her that they were yours. Please, please don't hurt me. I'm so sorry that all of this happened. Felicia didn't know what to think of this entire situation. All, all day long, strange things have been happening, but she let the hen go. She made her way over to her brother's room. She opened the door, saw the pink flowers underneath the straw mattress, looked around and started going towards them, and then out from under Bruno's bed crawled an army of rats. And they all came at Felicia and began attacking her. All that Felicia had in her hand was still that, that gold diamond encrusted pitcher full of water. She took the water and splashed it at the rats, who screeched and acted as though it was melting them and burning them. They scattered and left. She retrieved her pinks, and while holding them in her hand, she heard another voice that said, Oh, Felicia, now we can finally tell you how much we love you as much as we love flowers themselves. What was talking to her this time? It was the pinks. It was too much for poor Felicia. A talking hen, a noble lady, a talking cabbage, Talking flowers, this was getting ridiculous. As she was holding the flowers, Bruno came in and saw her holding them, realizing that she had gone into his room without his permission. He took poor Felicia by the hair and pulled her outside and locked her outdoors. At just that very moment, the noble lady, the fairy queen was just walking into the yard and had seen what Bruno had done to Felicia. She said, I could do anything you want to him. Do you want me to turn him into a shrew or maybe a shoe? Felicia said, no, 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 no. I don't blame him. I don't blame him. Well, what, what have you then? 
I don't know. I'm just a poor, poor laborer's daughter. Surely you don't believe that now. Surely by now you know that you are for sure a princess. How am I to know that without any type of proof? At which point the noble lady, the fairy queen, the friend of Felicia's very mother, began to tell her the story of how she was going to swap out her son for her own, but she sent her son off to the tower, but the son never made it to the tower because her very own enemies had trapped her son and turned him into pink flowers. At that moment, the flowers themselves began to shake, began to shine, and they turned into the young man clothed in green with a crown full of pink flowers. He smiled at her and said, Felicia, I've seen you my whole life. I have loved you from the very first moment I have known you. Please, would you accept my hand in marriage? He reached out and he took the silver ring that was left for Felicia that she had given to the fairy queen. And he gave it to Felicia. She thought for a moment and she thought, about the strangeness and the oddities that had happened and the stories that she had heard. But she accepted his proposal and together they lived happily ever after. Hey, thanks to Jamie Butler for commenting on my Rapunzel story a few weeks back that her girls really wanted to hear the tale, Felicia and the Pot of Pinks. I hope that they enjoyed it as much as I enjoyed sharing it. Uh, and as always, if any of you have a favorite folk tale or fairy tale or tall tale that you'd like to hear, leave a comment below. I'd love to hear from you. All right, question of the week. I want to know, what is your favorite picture book? I know that when I was a little boy, my favorite picture book was Where the Wild Things Are. But I want to know what's yours. Look forward to hearing from you. Have a great week. As always, if you've enjoyed this story, make sure you hit that thumbs up button. Subscribe to me if you have not done so yet. I will have a new story every single week. If you want to receive notifications about them, make sure you click on that bell down below. And I look forward to telling more stories with you soon.